And here's another example of this uh, new filter in the animated filters category, the motion prediction module. This time we have this animation of uh, some cable cars going across. Uh, I've stabilized the video already, so uh, it's only moving tiny little bit before the original was shaky. And um, what we'd really like to see is what the side effect is on the cable cars, especially the vertical bars, since this, uh, these cars are moving sideways. If you're doing the traditional animation uh, time stretch, which is under the frames menu here, and you go to time stretch, uh, let's say you go three times, so a total of eight times the original frames, more or less, um, with the frame blending, let's uh, do that. <clears throat> What's going to happen is that you you get sort of a crawling effect. I mean, if you if you stop on any of the frames, sometimes you'll see three vertical bars here. In fact, let's zoom into that to see it a little bit better. And then sometimes you'll see two vertical bars. Right? There's really only two. There's the one in the middle, and then there's left and right side. Each has two. But the blending is going to show a transition. Right. So here you go. You got two, and then the next frame was around here, but somewhere in between, there you go, and then somewhere in between it's doing a blending, so at some point it was actually showing half of the one frame and half of the other frame, which causes this interference pattern to show there. So uh, that's, a, that's a rather disturbing or distracting side effect, and the whole image seems to be swimming or crawling or, or all of the above, and that's certainly something we'd like to try to avoid when we do a quality uh, transformation of the video. So um, let's have a look at perhaps another example that I had uh, saved. If I load the AVI here, um, this one here was uh, also time stretched uh, with blending and a total of, uh, it's actually even more frames, it's uh, 1184 frames. So the, the amount of movement from one to the next frame, the amount of blend transition is a shorter amount, but it's still, it's not a distance short, it's a time short, so the impression is different, but it's still showing that, that uh, crawling effect. You can really tell it right there. Right. Zoom in a little bit. See how the, it's kind of a ghosting effect and the cable car kind of disappears gradually as it appears in front of the of its motion path so so that's really something that we can probably fix by not doing the traditional or we can avoid by not doing the traditional blend uh, and time stretch but instead using this new filter so let's let's go back to the original open the original uh, 960 by 4 a 50 and open that by 540, excuse me, 960 by 540 pixels is the original, and clearly here you can see that you know, there's only two bars, and they are not going to be uh, swimming or crawling or anything like that, unless of course the codec at which it was recorded has any sort of uh, artifacts. All right, so now let's go and uh, apply this new filter, the, the, uh, the alternate method to do this. Uh, let's, uh, let's show it at 100%. There you go. Uh, and, and again, the technique involves kind of similar to this, creating a grid over it, and each block that you have in this grid, each picture element, each each uh, block or square element, uh, I call it a squarelet, <laughs> um, is going to be analyzed for motion. So it's going to determine where did this block, for instance, move, and it will find that it moved to the left in the next frame. Right? And then it's going to replicate it there or, or do a uh, transition of that block by itself and fade it over there. And uh, so that's going to be a, a, a smoother uh, effect than if we have a, um, a, a traditional fade on the, the time stretch approach. All right, so let's have a look at what that does. Um, you know, in this case, what I might do is go to, of course, the filter animated uh, motion prediction module, and um, I'm going to use the default uh, grid spacing to see what that does. I'm going to use one sample for the fastest uh, preview. Uh, I don't care to see the motion vectors, although that could be actually interesting just to see what it is that's moving and what's not. Um, in this case, it's kind of predictable that there's going to be a, a lot of motion on the cable cars and pretty much no motion on the rest of the image. And then one thing you can do here also 
is uh, just to do a test at uh, one train or two, right, to see a very uh, small increment in the number of frames, uh, and do a, a dry run, right? So let's go and that would produce just 145 frames. And what you can see here now, you see the red lines. Those are indicating where the actual motion is, and you can see that it's not doing a whole lot of distortion. It's not doing a whole lot of uh, crawling or, or blending or anything like that. So much, much better, much more pleasant result already. Now I, I was in a dry run mode, so it's not actually keeping the results. It's just showing them here. All right. So now that we know that that's going to look pretty good, let's go uh, load the original again, just in case. I think there is one frame that does that gets affected. Yeah, the last frame here or the first frame gets a copy of the last or something like that. So we could either just toss that, right click here to delete this frame uh, and then work with just one less frame than we had before. Now we have just 73 frames. Uh, or if we really need to keep the total account the same, total amount of frames, uh, we'll just open that original again and say there it is, cable car at 960 by 540. Open that and let's see what we get there. So now this time I'm going to go all the way to uh, 16 tweens because that's going to give me roughly 16 times 74, somewhere around 10, uh, 1000 to 1100 frames, somewhere around there. And I'm not going to do the dry run. Well, well, we could still do that. Well, I'm going to just go and see what that looks like. One sample. Um, I think we're good for the rest here. We don't need the motion vectors necessarily. Uh, we know what's going to happen there and let's go. Alright, so um, what we have here, yeah, I expect about 1153 frames out of that. And you can now see that it's doing a much better transition. I mean, there's a little bit of swimming, a little bit of crawling, but it's, it's much, much better than the original uh, approach was from uh, just doing a, a blend in the time stretch module. So, so here's an example of where that plugin could be quite useful. In fact, let me stop this. I did render this a little bit earlier. And um, what we can do is just have a look at that as well on um, the animation as I'm playing that back. I saved that as an AVI. Let's go to uh, loading the AVI. And I saved it with lossless lagger with codec so that we can see it without any other um, side effects. And I think that would be... No, that's not this one. Actually, I guess I did not save that, did I? Yeah, well, okay. Well, it doesn't matter. We can uh, certainly uh, do that one more time. Let's go uh, open the original. There you go. And uh, this time, maybe I'm going to go to a little bit less. Let's say 12 tweens. And uh, let's go to larger on the grid spacing. So that might also speed it up a little bit and uh, ready to go and okay so this is going to give us 865 frames um, still a, a quite a bit better results uh, when you look at these cable cars they, they are barely uh, crawling or, or they're not getting uh, additional vertical lines like the uh, original traditional approach would have given us In fact, uh, while this is rendering still, let's zoom in a little bit to get a close look. And so that's what that's uh, what's happening here is, uh, you know, it's uh, each of those squares is analyzing where is it moving, and and then the next frame it repeats the whole thing, and then the next frame repeats again, and it's doing quite a compute intensive uh, analysis here. You can actually go and see uh, what the task manager is doing. Pretty busy. Not all cores being used here. Uh, but uh, like I said, it's something that you'll want to to hope you have a fast computer, multi-core, and just fast. <laughs> All right, so that's that for another example. Uh, let's uh, save it when it's done and then play it back one more time.